After studying this module, you will be able to know what are properties of ink, learn the methods which can differentiate between ink, identify the types of ink. Now let me start with a brief introduction. Ink is a liquid or paste that contains pigments or dyes and is used to color a surface to produce an image. Ink is used for drawing or writing with a pen, brush or even quill. Thicker inks in paste form are used extensively in letter press and lithographic printing. Ink can be a very complex medium composed of solvents, pigments, dyes, resins, lubricants, solubilizers, surfactants, particulate matter, fluorescence and other materials. The components of inks serve many purposes. The inks carrier, colorants and other additives affect the flow and thickness of the ink and its appearance when it dries. Now let me tell you something about types of ink. Magnified lines drawn by a fountain pen, ink formulas vary but commonly involve four components. Colorant, vehicles or binders, additives, carrier substances. Now ink generally falls into four classes. Number one is aqueous, number two liquid, number three paste and the last one is powder form. Now you know ink should have a viscosity appropriate to the printing process. Some inks have a butter like consistency and others have intermediate viscosity. Various polymeric thickening agents are added for this purpose. In this regard, ink chemists are interested in rheology, the study of relationship between the applied stress and resulting the deformation. Now complex fluids like ink show non-Newtonian behavior. That is, their viscosity changes when stiff. Although by themselves, most of the raw material in a typical ink composition show the opposite Newtonian behavior. Furthermore, most inks exhibit pseudoplasticity which essentially means that they become runnier when stirred or spread. You know in the past chemists fine tuned the properties of solvent bond inks by including polymers of various molecular weights. These inks contain relatively little solid matter that is were low solid type and required large amount of solvent to dissolve high molecular weight polymers. Now modern solvent free inks are high solid types incorporating monomeric and oligomeric polymers precursors that can be polymerized in situ after applying the ink to the substrate for example by UV light or high energy electron beam. Now these ink contain easily polymerizable mo monomeric or oligomeric unit mixed with an initiator that produce radicals or ions on iridation that will initiate the polymerization process. Now electron beam inks do not require an extremely added initiator because the electrons can themselves generate radicals. Aside from being solvent free, these inks cure instantly giving fast printing speed. Demand for these inks is currently growing at about 10% per year. This knowledge however is very important to you. You should always keep this knowledge in you. This information is very vital to have. As a forensic expert should know inside out of any substance that needs to be examined. Now how fast the ink dries governs the speed of the printing process. Drying can involve the absorption or penetration of liquid component into the substrate evaporating the solvent at a certain temperature or chemical process involving oxidation or polymerization. A newly developed ink that meets the requirements of a printing process and substrate will be subjected to a number of quality control tests before being marketed. These tests vary with the end applications. Some of these tests are termed print quality, block resistant, scrubbing, light fasten, bleeding, formability, shear stability, gloss, water resistance, tape adhesion 
and drying in the air. Now print quality test how good is the print, block resistant test the transfer of ink from printed roll to an unprinted surface and formability indicates the extent of foam generated in an ink formulation and so on. In addition to these properties many specialty inks are designed for other specific end uses with some new thermochromic and photochromic inks heat and light are needed to produce color while electronic ink requires an electric field to induce color. Now thermochromic ink help detect temperature changes in a moving part while electronic inks find application in various displays. Magnetic inks incorporate certain magnetic materials in the ink and are used in printing checkbooks for efficient screening by cashier. As these and many other examples show, ink is a more complex fluid than you might previously have imagined. The paperless society that many people envisage for the future is still a long way off. Meanwhile, ink chemistry. Before going in detail of systematic approach to ink identification, let me shed some light on facts of ink. There's more to ink than meets the eye, has been said by Joy Kunjapu. There are probably as many different definitions of ink as there are types. Perhaps the simplest description is that ink is a liquid or semi-liquid material used for writing, printing or drawing. Chemists view it as a colloidal system of fine pigment particles dispersed in a solvent. The pigment may or may not be colored and the solvent may be aqueous or organic. The earliest black writing inks was developed before 2500 BC and were suspensions of Carbon, usually lamp black, in water stabilized with a natural gum or material like egg albumin. Modern ink formulations are rather more complex. In addition to the pigment, they contain many other ingredients in varying levels. Now these ingredients are collectively known as vehicle. These additional ingredients include pH modifiers, humectants to retard premature drying, polymeric resins to impart binding and allied properties, deformer or anti-foaming agents to regulate foam efficiency, Wetting agents such as surfactants to control surface properties, biocides to inhibit the fungal and bacterial growth that lead to fouling, and thickeners or rheology modifiers to control ink application. Do you know? that over 90% of inks are printing inks in which color is imparted by pigments rather than the dyes used in writing inks. Now pigments are insoluble whereas dyes are soluble in nature though sometimes these terms are used interchangeably in commercial literature. Ink pigments are both inorganic and organic. Most red writing inks are a dilute solution of the red dye eosin. Blue color can be obtained with substituted triphenyl methane dyes. Many permanent writing inks contain iron sulfate and gallic and tannic acids as well as dyes. Now ballpoint ink 
is usually a paste containing 40 to 50 percent of dye. Most white inks contain titanium dioxide as the pigment, as tutile and anatase in tetragonal crystalline form. However, growing concerns over the known toxicity of heavy metals have led to the replacement of many inorganic pigments such as chrome yellow, molybdenum orange and cadmium red with organic pigments which offer better lights, fastness and reduced toxicity. Furthermore, carbon black now replaces spinal black, rutile black and iron black in nearly all black inks. In fact, the ink industry is the second largest consumer of carbon black. Other inorganic materials such as clays serve as fillers or extenders which primarily reduces the cost of pigments though some also improve ink properties. Metallic pigments like aluminium powder and copper zinc alloy powder which is also known as gold bronze are used in novel silver and gold inks. Miscellaneous inorganic pigments provide luminescent and pearl scent effects. Now changes in ink chemistry over the years closely reflect development in the instruments of ink coating the pen and the printing machine are the examples. The ballpoint pen, the felt tip marker and the fiber tip pen have led to inks containing solution of dyes in water or organic solvents such as propylene glycol, propyl alcohol, toline and glycoethers. Other ingredients like resins, preservatives and wetting agents are also added to it. Let us have a look on systematic approach to ink identification. Before starting the examination, always the non-destructive methods are used in examination of ink because it can preserve the original sample which can be further analyzed. First examination would be physical examination. This include the optical examination of ink with the help of hand magnifier or compound microscope. This examination is done to determine the type of ink used that is whether ballpoint pen, fountain pen or fiber tip pen was used for the writing purpose. Number two, color of the ink. Number three, comparison of secondary color shades. Ultraviolet rays are used to compare the degree of fluorescence. Number four, infrared rays are used to differentiate dyes and pigments and especially ballpoint pen inks. The second would be chemical examination. In chemical examination, if two inks are found same from the physical examination, then only chemical examination is processed over the document. Otherwise, the chemical examination can be avoided. 
because test results in the alteration of at least some part of the document. The chemical analysis of ink can be conducted in two different ways. Number one, performing chemical spot tests on the punched out on the punched out fragments of ink strokes or on the ink strokes itself. Number two, chromatographic analysis for isolation and characterizing various dye stuff inks. Let us discuss chemical spot test in detail. Prior to advanced techniques, the ink were chemically analyzed and differentiated by chemical spot tests performed on the ink itself or on small fragments of ink strokes punched out from the ink line with the help of scalpel hypodermic needle or punching plate etc. And now these chemical spot tests are exchanged by the thin layer chromatography and other sophisticated techniques. However, in some cases, the spot test may prove useful for conducting preliminary examination. Numerous reagents have been suggested by different workers for performing spot tests. The following reagents may serve the purpose. Number one, Bromine water. Number two, sodium hydroxide. Number three, hydrochloric acid. Number four, stannous chloride. Number five, sodium hypochlorite. Number six, oxalic acid. Now, carbon inks can be distinguished from other writing ink as this ink remains unaltered by the action of reagent. Logwood ink and iron nutgall inks can be differentiated with hydrochloric acid test. The logwood inks with these reagents give red or purple or red color reaction, whereas the iron nutgall inks give blue or blue-green reaction. Necrosine inks can be differentiated from the logwood and iron nutgall inks with oxalic acid test. The oxalic acid has little effect on necrosine whereas this reagent bleaches the iron nutgall ink to some extent or it may change color of logwood and iron nutgall inks. Next would be chromatographic analysis of inks. The principle of chromatography is that chromatography is based on the fact that sample distributes or partitions itself to different extent in two different immiscible phases which is described by partition or distribution coefficient. Now partition coefficient is concentration of sample in phase A by concentration of sample in phase B. Thin layer chromatography also known as TLC is considered to be the most suitable technique for isolating and identifying various components of inks. In these techniques, a thin layer plate is prepared by coating a glass plate with silica gel or aluminum oxide. But the ready-made silica gel G plates are also available in market. Depending upon the amount of ink deposited on the paper, 1 to 10 plugs of inks are removed 
with the help of a spatula or hypodermic needle and the ink is dissolved in the minimum quantity of a suitable solvent a few microliters of the solution are spotted with a capillary tube onto the layer on the thin layer plate and plate is then placed in a closed jar having selected solvents in fixed ratio the liquid slowly begins to rise up in the plate and when it moves past the sample spot the component of the sample get separated and get located at different heights when the liquid phase has moved a sufficient distance from the plate the plate is removed from the jar and the rf value of different spot are recorded for differentiating two inks their spots are marked on the same tlc plate and if these samples show same number of spots with the same rf value and colors then the two inks are identical in their dyes composition otherwise not rf value is defined as the distance traveled by the component divided by the distance traveled by the liquid moving phase now different solvent systems for ink analysis is number 1 butanol ethanol and water in ratio of 50 is to 15 is to 10 number 2 ethyl acetate cyclohexane methanol and ammonia in ratio of 70 is to 15 is to 10 is to 5 number 3 ethyl acetate butanol and ammonia in ratio of 50 is to 35 is to 5 number 4 ethyl acetate ethanol and water in ratio of 70 is to 35 is to 30 and the last one is toluene acetate ethanol and water in ratio of 30 is to 60 is to 7 is to 2 now here is the picture of the that represent the band patterns corresponding to ink removed from three different areas of a document here figure shows that sample 1 and 3 have a similar formulation while ink 2 contain different component than the other two now let us see the advancement in ink analysis the most commonly applied optical and spectrometry methods and finished with destructive examination by means of thin layer chromatography the absorption and luminous and luminescence properties in visible and infrared light of ball point pens can be examined with a system of filters letting through light of a specified wavelength from 600 nanometer to 1000 nanometer the vsc is most suitable instrument for examination it is in built with spectrometer so that examination by means of absorption spectrometry in visible and infrared light were also carried out while measuring the absorbing of light a white standard sample is used 
which reflects in full electromagnetic radiation of length of 400 to 1000 nanometer and the comparison is done between the amount of light by the ink on paper and the absorption of light by the standard sample for each sample of ink absorption measurement are made and then the obtained spectra were averaged and arranged in pairs in order to compare them let us discuss now about age of inks age of the ink is now possible and the main reason for determination of inks age is that it can be helpful in understanding the age of the document the aging of ink governed by a number of environmental factors such as aerial oxygen light temperature humidity and internal factors such as the nature of ink width of stroke and the nature of the paper bearing the ink etc it is not practically possible to determine the degree of effect of the environmental factors on a given specimen of ink a document enclosed in a closed polythene envelope and kept in a closed cabinet will age at a much slower rate than if the same document is exposed to light temperature air and humidity the reason is obvious a number of methods based on the change of color of inks solubility of inks amount of ferrous in iron gallotinate inks and iron migration etc have been proposed by a number of worker but till now no method have been fully successful to determine the absolute age of inks now let me summarize this chapter in this chapter we have learned that most of the criminals are not aware of ink analysis and in that case they form forgeries in document we have also come to know that a systematic approach is required for analysis in which firstly a non destructive technique is used that is physical examination after the physical examination is done with the help of optical instruments and oblique light which help in differentiation of ink only if the physical examination give sure results then examination can be stopped but when the results are not satisfactory then examiner should proceed for the chemical examination a chemical spot test are done for the preliminary examination and followed by the tlc analysis a more sophisticated and non destructive technique are used and are also available for ink analysis which includes vsc instruments that would be it for this chapter hope you have learned a lot thank you